12 News, an RV revival. No matter how bad the economy is, there's always a buyer. But who is buying RVs now may surprise you. Plus, Valentine's Day bliss for the young and the young at heart. It's better to get along than not get along. But first, a milestone awaits in Maple Grove that has taken decades to come together. 12 News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. Things are changing quickly along the Highway 610 corridor. After years of waiting, business owners in Brooklyn Park and Maple Grove are excited for the highway to be completed. Here's 12 News reporter Eric Nelson. The Highway 610 corridor in Brooklyn Park is exploding. New businesses are popping up everywhere. And soon, High V and the 610 West Apartments will open up off Zane Avenue. The exciting part is that next fall, the whole thing will be open. Just a few miles west in Maple Grove, change is in the wind, too. And that's going to be great for our, our part of town. In November, 610 will finally be linked to I-94. This is the 105th Street Bridge. It just went in recently. And it's another sign that 610 is almost finished. The bridge is a milestone for a freeway that has been on the drawing board for five decades. Finally, after all these years, we're finally going to see a road that should have been completed years ago finally get done, and it's exciting for our community. Retail owners in Maple Grove are excited about 610's potential for business. It's going to bring people right to our door. There will be an exit ramp, and everyone is going to drive on by. The Grove shopping area, located in the shadow of a future 610 exit, could prosper. I'm excited. It's going to be easy for people coming from all over to just hop on 610, pop off, and we're right here. You know, easy on, easy off, people will stop. And having another entrance and exit to the freeway, people are always stopping to look and see what's around and what's nearby. And I think it'll just have a positive impact on this area. Maple Grove Mayor Mark okay, Stephenson so predicts tremendous stop. business growth along the people 610 corridor the and says his city is geographically positioned to cash in. Certainly with 94, 494, 694, and 610 now, there's a lot of reasons for businesses to be located in Maple Grove. It's easy for people to get there. In Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson, Channel 12 News. The completion of 610 will also shorten the drive time from Brooklyn Park to Maple Grove and to St. Cloud as well and other points west. A semi-truck driver killed in a fiery crash in Rogers has been identified. 65-year-old Edward Risky of Marion, Wisconsin was driving the semi that veered off westbound I-94 Wednesday morning. It's unclear what caused the driver to crash. Brooklyn Park Police say they have seen an increase in robberies over the last month. The crimes occurred at different different times of the day along the Zane Avenue corridor. Thieves have targeted cell phones, purses and wallets. Sometimes the suspects used force to get what they wanted. For us to have 17 robberies in the month of January was high and that's why we responded very quickly by putting together this initiative that's, you know, very focused on robbery, street level robberies. Police don't know what sparked the rash of robberies, but they have made several arrests. Crystal Police are repeating warnings about callers claiming to be from the IRS. They received at least two scam reports this week. It's important to know that the IRS will not call you to demand immediate payment. It also does not demand you pay taxes in a certain way, such as with green dot money pack cards common to scammers. And it never threatens to bring in police to arrest you for not paying. Sparks flew between Minnesota's top legislative leaders just days before the start of the new session. A panel of four party leaders from the House and State Senate gave the Twin West Chamber of Commerce a preview of the upcoming session. Transportation funding for roads and bridges is a top priority this session, but there seems to be no love lost between Republican Speaker of the House Kurt Doubt and DFL House Minority Leader Paul Thiessen. The two sparred over everything from who gets credit for funding education last session to how to help middle class families with rising daycare costs. If you go around the state and listen to Republican legislators, they are crowing about the money that they put into education last year. So, you know, Kurt thinks he's honest, but if you talk to his members, you might t find a different story because the fact of the matter is they passed a bill that would have strangled 
our school districts. Don't pass policies that are going to make daycare more expensive and then sit up here and, and say that somehow we care about these people because they're paying too much for daycare. <laughs> there, isn't a, a, there is no need in Minnesota to unionize daycares, and it was the worst policy. Great politics if you're a Democrat and you want campaign contributions, but a horrible policy for middle class Minnesotans, and I hope it fails miserably. We'll see if more sparks fly when the legislative session begins March 8th. Lawmakers begin the session with a $1.2 billion surplus. The ground may be covered with snow, but people are dreaming about summer vacation. And numbers show now people are planning a vacation in an RV. Interest is up just in time for the Minneapolis St. Paul RV show. Gas prices below 150 a gallon. It's a side around the Twin Cities that would have been unimaginable a few years ago. During the recession, like you say, people weren't buying. Likewise, this scene at the Minneapolis St. Paul RV show would have been hard to come by back in 2008. Since obviously the decline in 2008, um, um, things have just been on a steady increase. Uh, gas prices have a lot to do with that. But RV dealers like Tim Niemeyer say low gas prices are fueling new interest in buying a vacation home on wheels. When gas prices are low, it gives people consumer confidence. And so the last three, two years for sure have been very well, very good. And uh, we everything points to having a strong year this year as well. Tim also says there are two age groups pushing sales. Older couples, they maybe have money in funds or CDs. Um, CDs aren't worth what they're used, what they were. So if their CDs are coming due, rather than re-upping their CD, they're like, let's go have some fun. You know, let's, let's spend our money and have some fun. But you'll also spot a growing segment of RV buyers. Because I want to buy Kappa. Families like Oliver's who are ready to move up from tent camping. I really like campers. We don't own one right now. We're just kind of looking for the good deal, I guess. Interestingly enough, the trend for 35 to 45 year old buyers is lightweight. I think people in general started to go smaller. You know, you see the teardrop trailers and kind of the retro ones. Showing that while low gas prices might be a factor in buying now, buyers have no illusions that gas prices will stay that way for long. I really like this one. The RV show runs until Sunday at the Minneapolis St. Paul Convention Center. Coming up, love advice from one of Maple Grove's most seasoned couples. And then a little bit later in sports, two local girls teams battle for the top spot at the state Nordic ski meets. But first, a chilly Valentine's weekend. Saturday morning will be an Arctic eye opener. Valentine's Day came a little bit early for several dozen Hennepin County couples today. Four couples packed into the atrium of the Hennepin County Government Center during the lunch hour to exchange wedding vows. The ceremonies performed by judges from Hennepin County's 4th Judicial District were a free service. The event is an annual Valentine's Day tradition and we found one couple from Robbinsdale who joined in on the fun. Because I'm in love and I don't see myself with nobody else. Look, I got married because I need to settle down. See, me as a man, you got to grow up to know when it's time to put your belt up and put your hat on the bed and be like, this is my home. You know, I'm the king of this castle. You know? So I have to let them know that she's mad for the take. Oh, they're a fun couple. More than 100 couples have been married since Hennepin County began this tradition four years ago. So what's the secret for making love last? Sonia Goins put that question to a Maple Grove couple married for decades. She's obedient. Oh, William, come on, get real. <laughs> Bill and Becky Condon will celebrate their 50th anniversary in June. I'm very lucky to have her. The two met at the University of Oregon and have been by each other's side ever since. The couple says they were friends before they became romantic. We enjoy the same things and be good to each other. The two moved to Arbor Lake's senior living about a year ago after they could no longer maintain their home. For them, Every day is Valentine's Day. You only want to be good to your spouse on one day of the year. That's stupid. Sometimes you get mad at each other at night, you know. But I don't think we've ever gone to bed mad, have we? No. In Maple Grove, Sonia Goins, 12 News.
Becky was actually dating Bill's college roommate when Bill swooped in, and the rest is history. Coming up, he makes you laugh and he makes you think. We meet Star Tribune editorial cartoonist Steve Sack. But first, Wyzetta and Benilde St. Margaret's battle in a top 10 boys hockey matchup. John Jacobson has sports next. Benilde St. Margaret's and Wyzetta will be the top two seeds in Section 6 AA hockey and could very well meet in the playoffs. In the second to last game of the regular season, these two top 10 teams played a great game. Big crowd on hand at Plymouth Ice Center Thursday to see the Trojans at the top ranked Red Knights. Early first period, Wyzetta's Luke Patterson passes to Grant Anderson, who fires a shot home, and it's 1 0 Trojans just 2 24 into the game. Wyzetta controls play in the first period. But Benilde is the better team in the second. Connor Mayer with an end-to-end -end rush scores on the wraparound for the Red Knights. And it's one-to-one -one through two. We go to the third period. Just under 10 minutes to go. Amar Batra scores on the rebound off of Tyler Stevens' shot. The Trojans looking for the upset lead two-to-one. Less than a minute later, Mayer scores his second goal of the game, getting a shot through traffic, and it's 2-2. Under five minutes to play in the game, and Benil Zach Risto feeds an open Augie Moore for the goal. Moore adds an empty netter as well. The Red Knights stay unbeaten on the season with a 4-2 win. Like at Wednesday State Alpine meet, chilly conditions greeted Nordic skiers at the state meet Thursday at Giants Ridge. It was a big day for local girls. Armstrong's Hannah Rudd, the first local girl out, starting third in the pursuit race and hoping to lead her team to victory. Margie Freed of Eastview wins the girls' pursuit title in a combined time of 32 minutes, 44.6 seconds for the two races. Rudd on the right just edges Renee Anderson of Hopkins for fourth place and Rudd's team takes the championship. Brex Ingrid Fear finishes ahead of Masabi East Skier and she takes sixth place. Five local girls place in the top ten including Michaela Keller Miller of Wysetta in ninth place. She helps the Trojans to a runner-up finish. Then it's the boys turn to take the course. Andrew Shaughnessy of Wysetta is the first local out in 19th place. Zach Ketterson of Bloomington Jefferson wins easily, finishing over a minute ahead of the runner-up. Ketterson is one of the nation's best. Sonnenson moves up from his starting place to take 13th, and he leads the Trojans boys to third place. Andrew Meon of Wyzetta edges Champlin Park's Ian Ivins for 18th place. Armstrong wins its first girls' Nordic title after two runner-up finishes. Wyzetta's second after taking the last three championships. Stillwater's third and Duluth East fourth. First time entered Champlain Park takes 14th. Minneapolis Southwest wins the boys title edging Stillwater by seven points. Wyzetta is third five points behind the ponies and Champlain Park places ninth. In girls hockey class A powers and longtime rivals Breck and Blake met up once again and it's playoff time and it was a thriller in the section final. The Mustangs and Bears playing for the championship. Breck looking to get out of the board. Greg Zumwinkle fires. Cam's off of Amanda Navratville's skate. Nearly goes in, but Blake Goley, Olivia was all there pouncing on it to make the save. Second period, Breck shorthanded. Zumwinkle carries it across and snaps the shot home. Mustangs grab a one to nothing lead. The Bears answer as Sarah McClanahan floats a nice pass ahead to Carly Bullock behind the D. And she'll score a shorthanded goal for the Bears. That's 1-1. Down two to one, Blake's Grace Voida circles off the wall and sneaks a shot home for the Bears. They tied up 2-2 through two periods. After a scoreless third, we go to overtime and Julia Shepard sets up McClanahan for the game winner for Blake. The Bears take the section title again in overtime for the second straight year, 3-2 over Brett. Several local teams competed for spots in the state gymnastics meet. Champlain Park, the site for the Section 5AA meet. Champlain Park's seventh grader, Cheney New, had a great meet here competing on the bars. She earns a 9.25 score to win the event. Park Center sophomore, Haley Illy, on the vault. She scores a 9.625. That's good enough to win that event and advance on to state. New again. This time on the balance beam, she'll score 9.375 to win, and she'll also take the all-around title. 
Champlain Park senior Taylor Gukin with a 9.575 wins the four exercise. The Rebels score a 145.5 as a team and they win section 5AA for a third straight year. Feels good to be going as a team. We were all really excited to make it. We have been working really, really hard. I think we're kind of looking at top three would be awesome. And I think this year will be super fun at state because we have a good team and hopefully we can do some big things. We'll have more highlights from this meet Monday on our Sports Jam show, excuse me, Tuesday on Sports Jam. And here are the final team scores. Champlain Park scores 145.5. Wyzetta finishes second, then it's Rogers third, Maple Grove fourth, and Park Center fifth. The state meet is next weekend at the U of M Sports Pavilion. God, we were off for President's Day Monday, yes. so we'll be on Tuesday. <laughs> All right, thanks yeah. a lot, John. Still ahead, work of an artist you may see every day. Star Tribune editorial cartoonist Steve Sack put, puts his work on display up next. We'll be right back. And finally, you might see this artist's work in the Star Tribune. Steve Sack is known for his cartoon drawings in the paper's editorial page. But as Neil Persley shows us in today's weekend showcase, there's a lot more to it than just black and white. Steve Sack is best known for his work as editorial cartoonist for the Star Tribune, but did you know that he has a colorful side too? This is the first time we've had a show of this caliber, um, and by caliber I mean just amazing artwork. It's just incredible, the use of mediums, the different content that we have, it's just absolutely incredible. And it's all by one artist. The moment you walk in, it's well, fun! I knew I was coming to the Art Center to cover a Steve Sachs show, and I envisioned an extensive collection of cartoons similar to the ones I see in the paper. Boy, was I surprised. Well, this is the other side of Steve. This is what he does in his free time. Um, as you know, artists do multiple things in multiple different ways, and so this is just another extension of himself. The larger three-dimensional pieces are made of paper mache. It's like being able to see a cartoon in 3D. In addition to giving his cartoon takes on politics and culture. Also does the doodle pages for those kids out there that are interested in art. Um, he's been working with the Star Tribune since 1981. And in 2003, 13 actually, he actually won the Pulitzer Prize for editorial cartooning. His work is whimsical, colorful, and always on point. He definitely has a unique style. The big eyes, the over accentuated features, kind of making things more whimsical than they really are in real life. I absolutely cannot imagine anyone walking into the Maple Grove Arts Center and not enjoying this exhibit. And it gives people the opportunity to actually see the work of somebody who's well known in our community through the Star Tribune and his work editorially in just a whole new way. It makes that art more accessible. From Maple Grove, Neil Persley, 12 News. And the show will be on display at the Maple Grove Arts Center through March 15th. That does it for us.